Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and I have a Les Paul here that has a very common issue to Les Pauls and other guitars that have a uh, tunematic style bridge, um, and that is that I have a buzz going on that is uh, related to the bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and play a couple of strings on here where you'll be able to hear what I'm talking about and uh, I'll go into talking about how it occurs and how to fix it. So. If you can kind of hear that bit of rattly something that's there, that's the buzz that I'm talking about. And I can get it to kind of quiet down. Um, this is actually one of the ways that you can kind of detect this kind of buzz, is you can put your finger down here between the uh, bridge and tail piece. And oftentimes, the, uh, when you do that, the uh, buzz will get better. Um, sometimes it won't completely go away, but you, you can clearly hear that that didn't sound quite as loud as... So, you know, what do we do about this? How does it happen? Um, well, what happens is, is that you have a lot of parts in here that uh, aren't necessarily super well fitted together. Um, there are certain tunematic bridges that are worse at this and certain ones that are better. Um, the ABR1 is the one that I will usually see that has some kind of buzz or rattle like this going on, um, basically kind of almost universally to all the ABR1 bridges. Um, there's the Nashville style, there's this style, there's all the you know various um, aftermarket uh, versions. But most of them all function basically about the same way, where you have um, a screw to adjust the intonation that goes in, and a little saddle that sits and rides on that screw, and then the screw is mounted in using something. Well, something is kind of what can cause the buzz to be worse or better, depending on what you have. So I'll go into talking about a little bit that uh, here in a second, because I want to remove this bridge and show you what I am looking at. So I have here uh, lined up a, a number of different iterations of the uh, tunematic bridge, um, that two of which I've cannibalized off of other guitars and just kind of had lying around, um, then the original one off the uh, Les Paul that we were just looking at. So we'll go ahead and talk about some of the differences between these. Um, so this is kind of a, a an ABR1 type, um, and you can see that uh, these kind of just, uh, well, let's see if I can... Uh, pry one of these guys out of here with a with a screwdriver because um, it really shouldn't take that much work but yeah with um, with this ABR1 these saddles just kind of come out and uh, the way that they're uh, retained inside uh, their little their little slots is that there's a retention uh, there's this retainer spring um, and this thing will kind of flex over the tops of these screws and kind of hold them down. And if you think that that kind of looks a little, you know, I'd say that I agree with you. I, uh, I don't like this design um, and I think that it creates problems. Um, mainly in just that this thing um, doesn't really oftentimes create full contact on all of the screws. And unfortunately, uh, you do need to take these out once in a while to flip these saddles around. And doing that, every time you disturb this thing, um, it becomes really uh, less good at doing what it's supposed to do. Um, there are ways that you can kind of, um, you know, help these things along. Uh, one of which is to take a flathead screwdriver and... Uh, indent that spring in between two of the screws that it's not holding down very well. Um, that's a solution that some people use and you know once in a while I'll get a guitar in here where somebody has done that and that's fine. That's an okay solution um, and it's one that sometimes uh, you know if you have a screwdriver handy it's that's the one that what's it's what you have on hand you know. Um, there are some other issues with uh, kind of these ABR1 styles. Um, this isn't an ABR1, but it's it's similar in that it has this kind of retention spring up top. Um, this is a Jin Ah something from Korea. Um, 
These cheap Korean ones, by the way, um, have a tendency to create burrs. Eventually, most of these bridges become string cutters, um, usually on the high E and sometimes in some other spots. And so, if you got one of these on your guitar, eh, just keep an eye on it. Um, if it starts breaking a lot of strings in the same spot, you know. Anyway, let's move on to uh, kind of our, our next model here. Um, so this is uh, a model that is an aftermarket. Um, I don't know if this is a Godo. It kind of looks like a Godo. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that this is pretty similar to the aftermarket Godo um, tunematic bridge that you'll see. You can get on uh, from Stumac or wherever. But this is basically kind of the same deal as the one that we're looking at with one important difference. Um, and that is that these are actually held in with little tiny retention springs that are in back here. So if I can get this camera to focus properly, if you see these two little lines here, that's actually a retention spring. This kind of forms a little triangle. I'll see if I can draw that out for you real quick. Um, used this for a different video earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and cross all that gunk out. And uh, grab a different pen because that one is kind of dying. Where you have the screw sitting up top, and then this spring comes down and goes over here and locks into place and then comes down and comes over here and locks into place and then this is the this is kind of the the sides here is where those little those little wings come over and that is actually a pretty effective way of holding in those saddles and I kind of like this a lot um, it is a thing that kind of um, it's kind of hidden, which I kind of like because it means that um, people who really shouldn't be touching this part will be less apt to touch it. Um, and it also works really well in just that these springs tend to be very easy to extract and uh, thus making the saddles easy to extract and they go back in and they're actually held really, really firmly. Not only are they held firmly, but if this spring becomes warped and gets out of shape, you can actually kind of you can kind of help it a little bit and get it to and get it to hold and bite into that a little bit more and provide more tension which is nice so this is actually kind of my preferred um, model if you got to go with a tunematic um, this is a this is a really really good way to go um, there are other versions out there these are just the three that I happen to have lying around the shop and then we've got this guy here which is off of the guitar that we were working on. Now this guy here has a very similar um, build to this guy um, with the tension springs, except that rather than the tension springs, this guy is actually held together with little uh, retainer rings, which I'm gonna say is problematic because those uh, retainer rings, if you've ever seen one of these things on, say, like a, a vice or something where you're only supposed to, it's supposed to be kind of a captured screw, basically, and so this retainer ring sits in there and you use ring pliers to separate it. That's what's in there, and it's in there in kind of a tight spot, and so getting in there and removing that um, is going to be a lot trickier than getting in there and, and, you know, undoing this type of spring here. Um, but on top of that, it doesn't actually do a good job, and if I shake this, you can hear the loose saddles in it. Getting that cup close to the camera so you can really hear it. Might have to turn your volume up. But yeah, so there's definitely some loose stuff. Going in here and kind of moving it around with my hand you can kind of see a little bit of movement in a few of these saddles and I can feel it through these uh, screws and if you kind of tap on these you can hear it so that's what's loose so what do we do to fix it well I'm gonna show you a cool trick that I have uh, adopted here that does a pretty good job when you run into this sort of thing alright so this is what we're going to use. We've got a, a flathead screwdriver. I've got some beeswax here. Um, beeswax is something that you can pick up at most um, most hardware stores. You can even get this at uh, like McLendon's here in 
Washington. You can maybe get it at Home Depot and Lowe's, uh, but any place that's higher end than Home Depot or Lowe's will definitely have this, um, especially if you've got like a Rockler hardware or something like that, a Woodcraft. Um, you can also pick up this stuff, which is basically the same thing. Um, this is just beeswax with a kind of a cool uh, corporate logo, I guess, um, but it's the same stuff. Uh, and I've got a torch here. Uh, this is just a low temp propane torch and that's what we're going to be using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a scoop of this beeswax out with a flat head screwdriver and you see on this side where the screw is that's where I'm going to go ahead and deposit that right there. And you know it'll take you know maybe just a one little screwdriver full, I guess. I'm not necessarily measuring this out. I'm just kind of going by, you know, what seems right as far as an amount. But what I am trying to do when I put this stuff on there is I don't want it hanging over the edge. Like, I want all of it to basically be sitting over that gap. I don't want a whole lot of it to be, you know, over this edge here. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be melting this in to the uh, screw and uh, that is going to be kind of messy unless we have these well placed. Um, now that being said this beeswax does not uh, not necessarily create like a huge mess it can be cleaned up with naphtha um, guitar polish if you're willing to work at it for a little while also does a good job. Um, but you definitely kind of just want to be mindful that you're not making as much of a mess as possible. Or as <laughs> keep it as clean as possible. So um, we'll talk a little bit about what's going to happen here. So we're going to hit this with a little heat. And we're just going to do a couple of real quick passes. Not enough to change the color of the metal. Not enough to burn anything. But what we're going to do is we're just going to melt that, uh, that wax to kind of a super hot temperature for wax. And it's going to wick its way down into the threads of that screw. And it's going to fill all of the little gaps in there. Um, while it is in there doing that, it's also going to act as a lubricant. And so, you know, over time, this is going to, you know, keep things from rusting, keep things from sticking. And so that's also pretty good, too. Um, but our main purpose here is that we want to fill those gaps. So I'm going to go ahead and start this torch. And like I said, we're just going to do a couple of quick passes. Yep. You can also use a torch lighter, like a little butane torch lighter if you've got one of those. And that'll work too. I find this propane just does a lot better job. It's bigger. Um, I use it for other things around here, like uh, putting new buttons on tuners. And so I just happen to have one. If you happen to have one, you can use that and it'll do a fine job. So if you touch this, it's going to be a little warm. It's just slightly too warm to hold right now. Um, and that's about what, what I want. I don't want to apply a whole lot of heat to this thing and, and, and you know, change the color and risk, you know, burning the, uh, burning the uh, plating and stuff off of it. We just really want to melt that wax, and that's all we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool down, and I'll come back and show you what I've got. We've given this a good chance to cool down. I'm going to go ahead and lift this up to the camera again and shake it. That's not me muting anything, but the rattling is gone. Um, we do have a little bit of melt over uh, from the uh, wax and a uh, little bit spillage over here too. And so I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to clean that up. Uh, this is just some VMP naphtha uh, as a solvent that you can pick up at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you buy your hardware. We'll have it because it's an essential thing for painting. 
and I'm using a little shop towel here. Um, I really love shop towels because they're non-abrasive and uh, they're very strong and so they make a very good thing for uh, cleaning guitars and guitar parts so watch where that little bead is there and we'll go ahead and just take this through there you see that's basically kind of gone just a little bit of streak there but yeah the uh, the wax will tend to leave these uh, streaks and so you'll probably have to go over this uh, twice once with uh, the solvent and then once with the dry rag um, but when you do that it'll uh, pretty much all come clean uh, this beeswax isn't uh, it isn't terribly resistant to to this and so it cleans up pretty easily so we're just going to go ahead and get in there and wipe the rest of this stuff off so that we can clean it up cool and so that is how we do that so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this back in the guitar we'll play around with it and show you that the buzz is gone so we've got the bridge back in the guitar so let's go ahead and pluck these strings and see what it sounds like So there we go. Uh, no buzzing bridge anymore. So um, this solution with the uh, with the uh, beeswax, I uh, use in a number of other places um, where I encounter buzzes. It's not always the you know the preferred or uh, good solution for a buzz. Uh, in this instance, um, with these uh, tunematic bridges, it works pretty well. Um, I've got some other videos that uh, demonstrate this used in other places. Um, which, incidentally, if you want to see more videos like this one, uh, please check out my channel. I've got a lot of them. Uh, and uh, if you would like to uh, schedule an appointment with me uh, to get something looked at, um, I have a link to my website in the description of the video, and you can contact me with, uh, with uh, an instrument that you want to get me to work on. Uh, I also have a link down there to my uh, Ko-Fi and my... Um, and my Patreon. So if you found this video helpful and you wanted to kick me a few bucks, that would sure be appreciated. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Have a good one.